war crimes and five counts of crimes against humanity. In the courtroom, the prosecutor said the warlord attacked civilians on ethnic grounds, abducted girls to serve as sex slaves, and used child soldiers. He has five days. She has five days to convince the judges that he should be tried. And it's time now to take a check to see what's making headlines in our Across Africa report. Organizers in Ethiopia rescheduled the start of a second round of peace negotiations between South Sudan and rebels Tuesday. The talks were to begin on Monday. No reason was given for the postponement. And officials in Burundi said Monday that flooding and landslides killed at least 67 people. An unusual downpour in the capital swept away hundreds of homes and cut off roads and power. And two car bombs exploded in the capital city, Somali capital city of Mogadishu on Monday and killed at least one person, wounding at least five. Officials said the attackers targeted government officials. And our Rise News Across Africa report continues with our Rise News contributor, Frankie Dozian, who's here with me in the studio. Hey, Frankie. Hey, Debbie. Good evening. Hey, good evening. It's good to see you. How are you? Yeah, we got a lot to talk about. Yes, uh, and starting off with this, we've talked about this before, this act of genital uh, mutilation. Cutting. Yeah, <laughs> genital cutting or, or mutilation, which is what it really is. Give us an update on what's happening in a couple of the countries. Sure. So in Kenya, for instance, there's a movement by activists who understand that that among traditional Maasai people, if a woman hasn't undergone the rites of passage to womanhood, it's very difficult for her to have a place in society, very difficult for her to get married, very difficult for her to have a family, and things like that. So what they're trying to do is to have these rites of passage include all the things that it would, including the ceremony, the shaving of the hair, the wearing a new bracelet, and the headdress to signify that a girl has become a woman without the actual cutting, replacing that with pouring warm milk over the thighs. It has cut traction among certain people, and more people are asking for it, but it's a way to say that you cannot divorce culture from this practice. What you can do is turn the practice around. So instead of cutting, you're doing all the things associated with it, and these women can still have a place in society. Over in Mali, uh, just on Thursday, there was a huge demonstration where there's zero tolerance for female gender cutting, and that practice has been, well, the Zero Tolerance Day has been going on since at least 2003. So slowly and steadily in different countries, many people are trying to find alternatives because rather than just say, this is a terrible thing, what do you replace it with? And these are the issues that people are facing. And that's such an important thing, and that is uh, finding something to replace it with. Because as you so aptly said, it's so much a part of the it's culture ingrained. and tradition. Yeah, it's ingrained. And if a woman, especially in a rural area, is not taught to have gone through the rites of passage, it's very difficult for her to move forward. So having all the colorful things that go with it, but without the actual cutting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For the, I know it's difficult to talk about. I know it is. But for, the, for those girls' sakes, let's hope that the, those uh, type of alternative practices does to, do take traction. Uh, well, let's move on so you can feel more comfortable. <laughs> yes, thank you, Debbie. <laughs> In Zimbabwe, they, they have more than just one currency that they're using. Well, so he, this is a very, very interesting thing, Debbie, because for a very long time they have been using the U.S. dollar. And in, in parts of the country close to uh, South Africa, the South African rand. And just a couple of days ago, the central bank uh, governor, Charity Dilwayo, announced that they're now going to start using the Japanese yen, the Chinese renminbi or yuan, the Australian dollar, and the Indian rupee. Now, <laughs> now it is very difficult right now if you go to Zimbabwe. You have to use the U.S. dollars, but you cannot get change because there's no coins. And so in supermarkets, people give you, you know, if there's change needed, they'll ask you to take some chewing gum or something. Yeah. But why I'm a little bit skeptical about this new move is that President Obama is having a summit with African leaders in August, and he has not invited Robert Mugabe. And the Europeans are having a similar summit, but the African Union president said they would not go unless Robert Mugabe was invited. Yeah. Brussels caged, the White House refused to cage, and all of a sudden we hear this this announcement that we're now going to start using all of these other currencies in addition to 
the U.S. dollar. So people in Zimbabwe are having a little bit of a crisis because they actually want their old Zimbabwean dollar back, but if not, they just don't see how they can do business with so many different currencies at the same time. No, it seems to me it would just be out and out chaos. It's going to be, you know, a logistical problem. I don't want to say nightmare just yet because we haven't seen how it will work. I mean, but they will point out that right now they use two currencies, the South African Rand and mm -hmm. the U.S. dollar. U.S. dollar predominantly, though, for sure. Yeah. But going forward, we'll see how it works out with five or six different currencies. I was going to say, none two of is which. one thing. Five <laughs> is a whole different yeah, thing. Yeah, none of which are uh, Zimbabwean. Right, right, right. Okay, let's move on and talk about another part of the, of the continent, and that is Cote d'Ivoire. Yes. Most people know it, know it as the Ivory Coast. Yes, the Ivorian miracle. So after all of these years of strife, the person that they elected, President Alassane Ouattara, who is a former um, top-ranking official at the International Monetary Fund, has been able to bring investors back to Abidjan. So in Cote d'Ivoire now, Luke Oil is back, Toto is back, Air Cote d'Ivoire is running up, is up and running again in partnership with Air France. There is also Bouget's, which is a French construction company. So there's a lot of movement. The, the bridges are being built, roads are being tarred, as well as <clears throat> more and more people saying we want to come and do business in your country. Standard Bank also just announced, South African Standard Bank, that they were coming. And the African Development Bank, it's moving its headquarters from Tunis back to Abidjan, where it was pre-crisis. So what we're seeing is that right now in Cote d'Ivoire, there is an opportunity not just for stability in government, but to bring this region, which was what a pearl of West Africa, mm -hmm. you know, People would say that, you know, Cote d'Ivoire was one of the more successful francophone countries in the region. It's now really back on the upswing. Yeah, and that is good news. We can have some more good news, and we don't often talk about good news as it relates to Somalia. Oh, yeah, I but, know. Uh, you just mentioned the bomb in Somalia, and I was like, mm. uh, I know, I know. But education, tell us quickly. We've got about a minute or less. Sure. There is a movement to have, there's actually not a movement, it's actually going on, donor-sponsored free primary education in Somalia, and it's catching on. The acronym for it is go to school. Many people in Somalia cannot afford to go to school, so the idea of giving them free primary education has caught on. It is a big thing. The only problem is that the Al-Shabaab people have now said their schools are going to be a target, and we know that many, many Islamic extremist groups have said Western education is sacrilege, and that is sort of their modus operandi. But for right now, many, many Somalis are sending their boys and girls back to school, so that is a good thing. That is a good thing. Finally, some good news out yes, of Somalia. Yes, and it's working. And the donors are putting the money in, as well as Qatar, which is also an Islamic country, which is giving money to the Horn of Africa nation, saying, you know, if your literacy rate comes up, the whole region benefits. So it's good. All right, very good. Frankie, as always, thank you, sir. Thank you, Debbie. All right, we'll see you again soon. That's going to do it for us today. We hope you have a great day. Come back and see us again tomorrow for more Arise America. I'm Debbie Turner-Bell. Bye-bye.